At Astra, we're planning to use a hybrid rocket in order to reach our target of space. So how does this stack up against other hybrid rockets which are being built by students around the world? Today we're going to go into the top 5 hybrid rockets built by students. Before we get into the top 5 hybrid rockets, we first need to understand what a hybrid rocket is. In order for a rocket to produce thrust, it needs to create a combustion reaction, utilizing a fuel and an oxidizer. A hybrid rocket just means that that fuel and oxidizer exist in two different states. The fuel existing as a solid and the oxidizer existing as a liquid. In order to create thrust, hybrid rockets push the oxidizer into the combustion chamber through some pressure mechanism and then that oxidizer will react with the walls of the grain in order to create the combustion reaction. That reaction is then fed through the nozzle creating thrust. Because the fuel and the oxidizer exist in separate states, they are stored separately inside of the rocket. This leads to their inherent higher safety because if there's something that goes wrong, it's unlikely that the whole rocket will just explode, as might be the case with a solid rocket where the fuel and the oxidizer are actually mixed together. So there's really kind of no way to stop the reaction once it starts. With a hybrid rocket, you can always shut down the reaction just by cutting the flow of oxidizer to the combustion chamber. Up first, we have a Swiss group called Eris, who just last year launched their innovative rocket called Picard. They launched this as a part of Euroc, which is a European challenge where student groups all come in Europe to compete and showcase their rockets. Picard stands at 6.2 meters tall and just over 17 centimeters in diameter. And with this relatively slender stature, they're able to produce some pretty incredible thrust at just over nine kilonewtons. After liftoff, Picard was able to break the sound barrier, reaching a top speed of just over Mach 1. Finally, they were able to reach an altitude of 6,400 meters, which just clinched the highest altitude for 2021 in hybrid rocketry. Congratulations to the Ares team for this fantastic rocket. Moving over to the American rocketry community, we have a group called MASA. Just five years ago, they were able to launch their rocket called Tortoise, which was part of an American student rocketry challenge called the SA Cup. Tortoise is the smallest rocket on this list, but it is quite efficient. They're able to pull off their design with just a rocket that was 4.25 meters tall and a thrust of only 4 kilonewtons. But they made up for that low thrust with a design that utilized a lot of carbon fiber, which is a really lightweight material to use in rocketry. As you'll see is quite common with some of the other rockets on this list, Tortoise was also powered by a nitrous oxide and paraffin wax combination, which seems to be the go-to for a lot of these high power hybrid rockets in the student rocketry community. In the end, Tortoise was able to achieve a maximum altitude of just over 9,000 meters. And with this flight, they were able to achieve the victory for the hybrid category at the SA Cup. So congratulations to the Tortoise team. Coming in at number three, we have an interesting rocket that actually doesn't come from the European or the American rocketry community. So we finally get to talk about a rocket that comes from somewhere else in the world. <laughs> this student rocketry program called the Aerospace Systems Research Group comes out of the University of KwaZulu-Natal, which is actually located in South Africa. The rocket they designed was called the Phoenix 1B. Compared to all the rockets on this list, they were able to achieve some pretty fantastic efficiencies. And they did this by kind of souping up the propulsion system. Instead of just using a standard paraffin and nitrous oxide combination for the fuel and the oxidizer, the Phoenix 1B actually puts a lot of aluminum into that paraffin wax fuel grain. And what this does is enhance the burn rate of the paraffin wax, while also giving a little more specific impulse, which is kind of like the efficiency of the rocket. So with this combination of aluminum and paraffin wax, they're able to get up to a specific impulse of 252 seconds, which is about 20% more than we would usually see in these types of systems. So that's really a fantastic job. Because of this higher efficiency, they're able to get away with a bit of a smaller design. The rocket only stands at about 4.2 meters and it has a diameter of just over 16 centimeters. And also kind of like Tortoise, they had kind of a lower thrust at just five kilonewtons. But with that, they were able to achieve some pretty incredible altitude results. They finally reached an altitude of 17.2 kilometers, which set an African student amateur rocketry record. And also, if I'm not mistaken, I think it might actually just be the overall African record for rocketry at the time. <laughs> so really incredible job by these students. That launch was just last year. So really looking forward to what the next steps of this group is gonna be. This group actually did build a Carmen line attempt vehicle back in the past. Unfortunately, the launch didn't go quite according to plan, but Kudos for trying, and I'm pretty sure they still have the Carmen line in their sights, so watch out for what they have up next. Who knows, the first hybrid rocket to space could be out of Africa. Coming in at number two, we have the Delft Aerospace Rocket Engineers. We talk a lot about this group on our channel because they build a lot of cool rockets, so it kind of makes sense that they would feature on this list as well. 
It turns out that their flagship program, Stratos, was able to produce one of the highest hybrid rockets ever flown in the student rocketry community. The rocket that achieved this milestone was called the Stratos 2 Plus, and it stood at just over 6.9 meters tall, being one of the taller rockets on this list. The engine that powered the Stratos 2 Plus was called the DHX Aurora, and it was also a hybrid system which was utilizing a paraffin wax and nitrous oxide as the fuel oxidizer combination. Instead of putting aluminum into the paraffin wax though, DARE likes to put sorbitol into the paraffin wax, which also enhances the burn rates and can give you some better burn characteristics. However, it's not quite as energetic as the aluminum. The main goal of the Stratos program was to reach the carbon line, so they kind of always designed their rockets with that in mind. And we definitely see that type of methodology in the design of Stratos 2. It only really takes a couple of tweaks in order to turn this rocket into a carbon line reaching vehicle. The DHX Aurora produced about 10 kN of thrust, which is not the biggest rocket that DARE has actually designed, but it was the biggest one in which they have had a fully successful flight. And fortunately, the successors to the Stratos 2 Plus vehicle, which were designed to go to the carbon line, never quite had the right circumstances in order to have a fully successful launch. And as of just a few weeks ago, DARE has decided to discontinue the Stratos program in favor of using liquid propulsion in order to get to their goal of the carbon line. But who knows, we might see some more hybrid rockets from them in the future, so stay tuned. Finally, at the top of the list, we actually have a rocket group which comes out of Germany, called High End. They built a rocket called the Heroes 3, which was able to achieve some pretty high heights. They designed a rocket engine which was actually using HTPB instead of paraffin wax for the fuel grain. In some respects, this is a little bit easier to work with because it tends to regress a little more consistently, but it doesn't regress as quickly. The advantage of paraffin wax is that you can really get higher regression rates and get some really high uh, thrusts. HTPB doesn't really have the high regression rate of a paraffin wax, but it does have a little bit more of a reliability. So in some senses, it can be better in this, in this regard. The rocket powering the Heroes 3 vehicle was able to achieve a thrust of 10 kilonewtons, and this is what carried them to the world record for the amateur student rocketry community. After launch, they're able to achieve the dizzying speed of 2.3 times the speed of sound, and that carried them to an altitude of 32.3 kilometers, which far exceeded the past record for the highest hybrid rocket in the world. And that record has stood since 2016. But there'll be some action in the high-end group this year to try and challenge that record again. They've designed and built a new rocket called North, which should be launching this fall. Their target is to beat that record, and hopefully go far, far beyond it. Just looking at their vehicle specs, it looks like they should be able to achieve an altitude in excess of 50 kilometers. So, really excited to see what they can do. Although hybrid rockets tend to be not so popular in the commercial community, they are actually quite popular in the amateur community. So in some respects, when you work on hybrid rockets, it's kind of like you're on the cutting edge of what's going on. Astra's looking forward to participating in this cutting edge space race in the hybrid rocketry community. So stay tuned for our progress. We have lots of exciting testing that's coming up and hopefully that's going to be what takes us to the Carbon Line in 2023. If these student rocketry groups are pumping you up, be sure to give the video a like. And remember, to expand your horizons.